Hello and welcome to another episode of Insider Focus and today we're looking at all things Glasgow Rangers. The transfer window is coming to a close. We will be on the final day in 16 days time. There isn't long left at all and Rangers, Michael Beale and co have had a very, very busy summer. They have brought in a number of players. We'll go through that, have a look at that. Where have they maybe failed in some of their targets? Certainly areas that they could have strengthened and how have they done so far? We'll look at some outgoings in terms of Scott Wright and Glenn Kamara. What is happening on that front as well? And potential contract extension as well we'll talk about for one of Rangers players. Before we do that though, make sure you hit like and subscribe. It really helps us out. And by the end of the video, I want you to rate Rangers transfer window out of 10 in the comments below. Let me know what you think about the Rangers transfer window. Is it a 6? Is it a 5? Or is it a 10 out of 10? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Now, of course, Rangers have brought in players nearly in every position on the pitch to help this season. Apart from out wide, we can discuss this. Now, Rangers had... A big task in hand. They lost the likes of Alfredo Morelos and Ryan Kent and some key players left the football club. Your Scott Arfields and co. Who had all been there for a long, long time. And Michael Beale was going to be in charge of a rebuild. And to be clear, this is his rebuild. Himself and John Bennett and the other members of the board at Rangers have been in charge of the transfers when Ross Wilson left the club in to join Nottingham Forest. So the director of football left and Michael Beale took over the transfers, which some old school people, some people of the day where managers were in charge of all the transfers, would have loved that. They would have thought that's perfect, that's exactly what should be happening. So if you look at their actual expenditure, they spent over £15 million, around £16 million spent by Rangers, but of course that's been offset for around £7 million in sales. So the club themselves have had a reasonably good window. They're about £8 million uh, spend at this point in time. Of course, they picked up £5 million last night by playing Servette and beating them just in the Champions League to get through. Wasn't the greatest performance. I think most Rangers fans would agree, but they got through and they'll play PSV in the next round for that real chance of real money to make the Champions League group stages. And you've seen some of those signings coming to fruition, I suppose. Jose Sifuentes, we knew that he was going to be a big, big signing for Rangers. Around about that £1 million mark is the understood fee to bring him in early from LAFC. And that was, of course, because his contract expired in December as a player Rangers really wants. And he does look the part. He looks like a machine, energetic, will help in that midfield, help the likes of Nicholas Raskin, of course, uh, Todd Cantwell in there to explode and be the best they can be. Ryan Jack sitting and remained at the club. He signed a one-year contract extension as well. One of those kind of stalwarts who's remained at the club and signed that extension too. They brought in defensive cover with the likes of Dujon Sterling coming in to help the club. They've brought back, of course, Leon Balligan, who looked solid against Livingston at the weekend. But these signings are really going to be showing their worth and have the opportunity to show what they're all about in the big games. It's going to be the Old Farm Derby against Celtic. It's going to be the Champions League night. So your Aberdeens, your Hearts, your Hibs away. These games that Rangers will really need to win if they are going to beat Celtic. And there's certainly some cause for concern. There's been some disjointed performances, some holes in the team when they've been playing, but they've brought a lot of people in. Let's look up front, of course. They've brought in Danilo for around £6 million from Fianor, the Brazilian, only 24 years old, which is a good sign. He's still got plenty of growing and learning and developing to do in his career and has signed a long-term deal at Rangers. Looks like a player who could have tons of ability yet to settle hard to judge. They brought in Cyril Dessers as well for around the £4.5 million mark. A player who is just your number nine goal scorer, your Alfredo Morelos replacement, certainly hasn't hit the ground running as fast as Alfredo Morelos did in his Rangers career but again still early and hard to judge him. Sima has come in on loan of course from Brighton only 22 years old certainly looks like he might be struggling a little bit. Rangers have allowed Fashion Sakala to leave now my understanding is Fashion Sakala could have probably been convinced to stay however listen you can't blame him and you can't blame Rangers for the situation they got good money for Fashion Sakala around about that three million pound mark of course and uh, four million pound mark sorry I should say and he's going to make more money than he ever would in the Scottish Premier League so you can blame nobody for that situation however Fashion Sakala always offered something for Rangers and I think it's fair to say Rangers fans and whether you thought what you thought of him altogether as an all-round technically brilliant player. Yep, that certainly was lacking at times. But he also did bring something every time he played. And Sima has got to try and live up to those expectations when he comes on off the bench or starts for Rangers. Jack Butland looks like a top piece of business for Rangers. Premier League goalkeeper, former England number one with an unbelievable save last night. So they have strengthened well in some areas. 
But there are areas that they still have missed out on targets. We do know that they liked Trusty and Panzo, the centre-backs. We do know that was an area Rangers were looking to bring someone in. They have brought Balligan in, like I've already said, and that now looks like that has sorted out that position for them. They still have Leon King there, Connor Golson, John Suter looking like a real Rangers centre-back. Ben Davies in there, despite the rumour mill around him at this point in time, doesn't look like he's going anywhere. There isn't any significant transfer um, activity happening around him at this point. So it looks like he will be at Rangers, although obviously if suffering with injury at this point in time, Dijon Sterling can help Tavernier at that right back position. And then the left back position, Red Van Yelma is another player that has had a ton of speculation around him, although again, no real transfer movement or activity, just noise at this point. So it looks like he'll be staying at Rangers. And then Borna Barisic, who has started the season fantastically well for Rangers, another assist, three in three games so far this season last night and early contract talks were discussed there were discussions with his team over extending that deal because he's he, his deal runs out in 2024 so Rangers are at a stick or twist point with him whether they will need to offer an extension or a new deal or allow him to go for free in summer if they do not sell him before then at this point in time that is not looking highly likely that he will go before then perhaps the performances recently will bring in some suitors but there have been early discussions very early discussions about a month ago over a new deal for him so that is also a possibility that Rangers could get Borna Barisic signed up for a new deal. Let's talk about Glenn Kamara in the middle of the pitch. Leeds United have been heavily linked to him. They have done work on this Leeds, but it's been pr probably not quite there yet. Certainly a number of championship clubs, my understanding was, and I was told by someone at one of the clubs in the championship on the recruitment team, he's on every championship club's list, and that was their words. Because of his ball retention, his turnover, being able to get the ball and move it forward, he suits a lot of championship teams and how the championship usually works. So Leeds United, not the only team in this race. Glenn Kamara currently training away from the first team. His exit being readied. Whether it's going to be Leeds United yet, we will wait and see. But player that was really gone last summer and looks like he kind of downed tools or set his heart. Down tools is always harsh, but set his heart on a move elsewhere since then. So Glenn Kamara is heading for the exit. Certainly not been in the squads, not been involved. And that's because we know his time at Rangers is almost up. And with that Rangers midfield now looking pretty solid and setted, settled. Dowell's come in from Norwich as well, obviously, was the first signing in for Michael Beale this summer. Scored a fantastic goal at the weekend. Looks like a player who could come in and do a real job for the squad when needed. John Lundstrom still there. Ryan Jack, Raskin, Camp, Will Sifuentes. Looks like Rangers have their numbers there. And Glenn Kamara, not part of those plans. So he will exit Rangers in the next week or so after a few years of service at Ibrox. Let's move to the winger situation, which has been a much discussed situation over the last couple of weeks at Ibrox. Scott Wright still has major interest from the Championship. Preston North End, a club that still likes Scott Wright. A number of clubs in the Championship chasing his signature. I think a few of them will like them on loan. My understanding is Rangers will be keeping a transfer, uh, a permanent uh, deal, sorry, for Scott Wright. So those discussions are ongoing. Wouldn't surprise me you see Scott Wright leave before the end of the window. It was close to a move to uh, Turkey. That was that was nearly done, but Pentascore couldn't quite get that deal over the line. One with Rangers and two with Scott Wright. So there was both two issues there. Scott Wright went to Turkey, as I reported. Went to see the training ground, as I reported, in the facilities. But again, as I reported, it was never a done deal. He has been on the tier list for Saudi Arabia. If any of you know, that's how that leagues working tier one tier two tier three your Neymars and co are also your tier ones and then it moves down the tiers that they try to build squads and leagues that are capable of having a league that's competitive so there's a number of players who you might not expect which you've started to see in the championships some league one sides now who are players sorry who are moving to Saudi because they're on that tier list that's starting to get moved down obviously Scott Wright though wants to stay here and has options in the championship at this point in time. So that wouldn't surprise me if that happens in some capacity. Most likely at this point of talking, to be alone with an option to buy. But Scott Wright, another player heading for the exit door. And he's talked about a Ryan Kent replacement, hasn't he, uh, Michael Beale? Someone to fill the gap left by the English winger. And listen, say what you want about Ryan Kent's numbers when he was at Rangers. They were certainly not good enough. He always brought something. He always created something. He created the space or went past a man that allowed a ball through to another player to get an assist. You know, he almost had the, the assist before the assi actual assist, if you like, constantly. And it, it is a major, major drain on the creativity up front there at Rangers that they once had. Luis Palma, a player heavily linked with Rangers talks, never went further than interest and inquiries from Rangers. They never did go further than that. 
whether Rangers can come back in. He's still at Aris. He's still there. He's still available. We'll wait and see Stoke City, another side who have gone to watch him. Stoke City are putting a lot of money into that club, a lot of backing there. They're heading for the Premier League if they can. That's their aim this season. Number of championship clubs like him, clubs around Europe. I expect Lewis Palma to leave Aris this summer. Could Rangers go back in for him? They've had a long-term interest in him. And he certainly would give Rangers that creativity, perhaps, that he's... That that Michael Beale was alluding to with Ryan Kent. So that is an option for Rangers as well. But their summer started so fast and it's ending slowly. However, this is now the time for the squad to build and gel. And I think the end of September is probably when you can start really judging this squad. However, we know in Glasgow, you don't get time. And Rangers play Celtic very soon. They've got PSV in the qualifiers for the Champions League. That'll be a very hard tie. And there's they're currently playing, you'd be surprised if Rangers beat them. That's me just being honest. You'd be really surprised if Rangers beat PSV with the way that they're currently playing. But what you've seen from the side at Govan is that they can pull off the incredible in Europe. They have done it many a time. So we shall wait and see. But make no mistake, lots of pressure on Michael Beale this season. These are his players. He has pinpointed them. He is the one that has basically been the head of recruitment at Rangers throughout this summer. So it's his squad now. So no time for Michael Beale to stop and, and not get points as quickly as possible. Going out of the Champions League and a defeat to Celtic in a few weeks' time could put major pressure on the Rangers management. Let me know what you think in the comments below about the window. Is it a 10 out of 10, 5 out of 10? Let me know what you think. Make sure you hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheerio.